in November 2015, I was sitting there, as you can clearly see from this picture. At that point, I had only three months experience with Go, so it was pretty hard for me to keep up with all the talks, except one. This guy was talking about, should be here, this guy was talking about how to embed C Python in Go and how to extend Python using Go. And as a Python software engineer, that was very interesting. One hour later, I was in the lobby, literally searching for a new job when I met those guys. Now we, we like to dress the same, as you can see. <laughs> Three months later, I joined Datadog. And believe it or not, one of my tasks was to write a Go application capable to run Python code. I know what to do. So now I have three minutes to share, share with you what I learned from this experience. The GIL stands for Global Interpreter Lock, and it's a technology pretty widespread in interpreter languages like Python and Ruby. Let me explain how it works. This is the Terminal 1 at the JFK airport, and there are parallel lines before the security check. At the end of each parallel line, there is a desk where a TSA agent can see it and check your passport. So when you arrive, you say, oh, right, parallel lines, this is going to be fast. Wrong. Usually, there is only one TSA agent picking up randomly people from the parallel lines. Now, imagine passengers are Python threads, and the body scanners are CPUs. The TSA agent is the GIL, ensuring that only one thread at a time can actually run uh, on a CPU. Now, uh, okay, you cannot run Python code in parallel. This is not a problem. This is a fair trade-off between performance and simplicity. But what happens if you embed Python in Go? Now, imagine a giant gopher is standing on the back of the TSA agent, actually telling people to move on. Like, you, 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 move, move. Like, believe me, I'm a gopher. Like, <laughs> what could go wrong? <laughs> Literally everything. If you want to experience a wide range of runtime errors in your Go application, just try to embed CPython. But yeah, seriously, if you want to run Python code from Go, you have to, like the gopher has to sit down with the TSA agent at the desk and try to figure out how to move people across the lines. Usually what you do is, first of all, you tell CPython you are going to handle the GIL manually, turn the autopilot off. Then every time you want to run a Python code, you acquire the GIL, you run your Python code, and you release the GIL so other Python code can actually run. At the end of the day, when you don't need Python anymore, you can tell CPython, we are done, turn back the autopilot on. But there's more. Let's say you have a Go routine running Python code, and in your Go routine, you are doing everything as seen before, lock and unlock. Let's say you lock the GIL on a thread called M0. The GIL keeps track of the thread ID. What could happen, though, is that the Go runtime could switch your Go routine from one system thread to another. This is the case, for example, if the active Go routine is performing a syscall. So you lock the GIL on a thread ID M0, and when you lock the GIL, you are on the thread ID M1. This is going to bring down your entire Go application. So what you would do? Well, you can tell the Go runtime can you please not move this Go routine ever from this thread? If you ask me, this is a legit case for using LocOS thread. If you want to see more adventures about Python and Go, please check out the GitHub repo for the Datadog agent repo. Everything is open source. Thanks.